Hi, everyone, and welcome to Dance Canvas's Choreo Chat. We are excited to be joined today by Kayla Carter. She was and is one of our 2020 choreographers. And we are excited to talk with her today because Kayla, we haven't seen you in a few months because COVID shut us down. And um, I think this will be a great time for us to catch up and find out all of the things that you've been up to and how this time has affected you and your work as an artist and as a choreographer. And so welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? What, you know, what got you to this point? And um, anything that you think audiences would love to know about Kayla? Okay. I have the very cliche of I've been dancing forever. I started dancing when I was three. Um, a little less seriously until I went to high school. So around 14, I went to Duke Ellington School of the Arts because I'm from Maryland. So I went to school in DC and that's where I started kind of taking my training more seriously. From high school, I went to college at Butler University, which is in Indianapolis, Indiana, and kind of continued my studying there. I got my degree in dance arts administration um, and a minor in creative writing. When I was in college, that's when I kind of started to become more serious about choreography in general. I did a little bit in high school. I wouldn't say that it was anything worth looking at per se. So in college, I kind of had a little more input and a little more instruction in my work. And it kind of made me realize that, oh, this is something I'm actually interested in. I had a, I had a better platform that I was able to use so that other people could kind of see and be like, hey, I think you should do this, or I really like what you did there. Maybe you should lean into that a little bit more. So college really helped me kind of delve into that side of, I would say, my artistic journey. And then after graduation, I moved to Atlanta. So I've been here about a year now, and I started dancing with Ballethnic Dance Company. This is my second season with them. And during the summer before I moved here, I found Dance Canvas and I was like, I just want to apply for this. I wasn't really expecting to hear anything. And then I found you and I got accepted. I was very excited and surprised. I was like crying in the car. I was like, mom, you don't even know what just happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we were really impressed with your work and your submission. And um, let's talk a little bit about the work that you were developing for our performances um, last March. So you wanna tell us a little bit about the piece that you were working on? Yes, the piece I was working on, or I guess am still kind of continuing right. to kind of shape and mold, it deals with conformity and a little bit of diversity and how in everyone's kind of the same. And even in trying to be different, you still end up being the same as someone else. And it's very hard to kind of create an original path for yourself when in diverging, you still end up being the same as someone else. That's what I was playing with. <laughs> and so with conformity, and I remember we talked a lot about how does that manifest into movement? What were some of the things that you worked on with your cast to try to tell that story through movement? Yeah, and it was very difficult to even form a thought process that translated the same way I was thinking it onto the bodies. And obviously when you're talking to other people, everyone's thinking something different. And so finding what I need to say so that it's connecting to all of them the same way was kind of hard. And so I remember even with talking with you, it was like, okay, maybe we should focus on like having some people break away, but not making it too repetitive so that they don't, the, the audience doesn't get comfortable with what's happening on stage or how can I show everyone doing the same thing, but what's that little thing that's like, oh, someone's obviously trying to be different right then, right there. And then they still get stuck back into that pattern of holding with the group and staying with the social norm. Or maybe two people break away, but now they're both doing the same thing. How do we show that? And how do we show that it's different, but it's the same thing, even though it's a smaller group now doing that. So really just making sure that it's clear, like if people are leaving, then they're leaving. If they're doing the same thing, then it's the same thing. If they're being influenced by an outside person and being forced to do something, then we see that they're being influenced and that this isn't their own thought kind of guiding them to do this right now. Yeah, yeah, and I definitely saw that in, in your piece. And you had, you had quite a large cast and lots of different body types and 
um, male, female and, and partner work and things like that. How was it working? I know this, that was your first, um, or this is <laughs> your first um, venture into choreographing on professional dancers and in a professional setting. How was it to work with, you know, dancers you you met at an audition or hadn't worked with them before? It was very different because obviously previously I had been choreographing on peers. And so they all knew me. They all kind of understand how I just naturally communicate. They aren't confused when I'm frazzled because I just kind of exist in the frazzled state of mind. <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so switching to people who don't have any previous knowledge of how, who I am, how I work, maybe I'm saying a metaphor and analogy that doesn't, it's very loosely connected, but they're not able to kind of be intuitive about what I'm trying to say. They're just because they don't have any previous knowledge about me. It was hard for me to kind of be like, all right, okay, well, focus on what you're trying to say so that you can be specific and actually be clear instead of just saying random nonsense that they're not going to pick up on right now. And so basically communication, making sure I'm being as clear as I can be so that there's no misinterpretation from what I want. So it's an exciting process that you're kind of at the beginning of. So I'm excited for you. <laughs> And hard too. I'm sure you remember because I had just moved here and I wanted this large right. team and I knew no one. I was like, what am I supposed to do? I don't have any really solid connections here yet. I don't know. I don't have a large database to pull from. And you were so helpful with that. You were like, okay, here are these people. You can email them. And I was like, thank you. <laughs> and I also was like, Kayla, your cast is big. I know. And it's you tried to tell me you were like, scheduling is really good. It's a nightmare. I was like, but I really want this. <laughs> and you, you, you did an awesome job with, you know, getting everyone there and on the same page. And, you know, I, you wouldn't know that your cast hadn't been working with you for you know, oh, a it, took a minute. it took a minute for it to all <laughs> kind of form together and be solid. <laughs> what do you think was the hardest part? Um, take away COVID. We'll talk about that in a minute. But um, what was the kind of most challenging part of um, your time developing work? Mm -hmm. uh, I would say it's not going off on a choreographic tangent I'm very good at those I kind of start a phrase and I'm like oh I like this and so I keep continuing it and it's like well, wait a second we could really edit this down and get to the core of what I'm trying to portray right now and it always takes me a while and I'm like this with most things so it's never surprising but I also tend to not realize it until a little later I go off on this tangent and I'm like wait weeks later I'm like wait a second we don't really need all that we can pull it back but I like to keep everything I want everything to be because it's like I worked on this and it's like you can let it go and use it in something else it doesn't have to be right here in this thing that could be 15 seconds and it's taking up a whole minute like it doesn't need to do that so the ed editing very difficult for me because I like to keep everything but everything <laughs> is necessary but I, think, I think that I mean you it's said it so perfectly that you know <laughs> you you if you fall in love with something it doesn't mean that it necessarily has to go into this you know that's the whole point of like workshopping material and you know figuring yeah. out what you're trying to say and then you know if there is a phrase you like hold on to it and see if it comes back I love that concept and and I, I mean, as a choreographer myself, I, yeah, I've done that lots, <laughs> had, had different um, ideas that just didn't work in one piece, but I visited them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, with the, you know, with the CCDI program, which is Dance Canvas's Choreographer Career Development Initiative, and that's kind of the overarching program that you are a part of and still are a part of. Um, what 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 were some things that you gained during your time working with us? Okay, it may not have seemed like it, but I really sincerely appreciated all of the direct feedback I got, even if it didn't look like it was going into the work like directly after we talked about it. I would be thinking about like, okay, they're not seeing something. How can I get that in that process? I feel like it really kind of refined my mind a little bit because I'm looking at it and I'm like, I see it right there but obviously I thought of it when I did it so of course I see it and I was like wait a second reframe what are they trying to say how can we get this and so really just kind of making me zero in on what's working what's not working that helped 
a lot. And as you know, we talked several times and I was like, okay, what, what's happening again? Why is this not working? Say it one more time, maybe just another, one more time. How can I make this better? Just kind of pulling on all the knowledge that I could get from everyone else or even when all the other choreographers were talking or when they were getting feedback, just kind of listening to what wasn't working for them and what was working for them. How can I translate that into what I'm doing? hearing what they had to say to me and hearing what everyone else, like everyone else who was also so very talented, like had to say, I was like, okay, how can I make this read better? And how can I keep at the same time the things that I feel like are integral to the piece? So let's, let's talk COVID. Oh my goodness. So it hit us as we were heading into the theater for yep. your show and, you know, it, months and months and months of work. Lots of work. Um, and it came to a came to a halt. Stop. Just <sighs> how was that for you? What what what? I mean, I know how it was for me as a director. How was it for you as a choreographer working in it? I have two very different answers. <laughs> One part of me, I was so we were go 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 nonstop. I was so ready for this piece to be on stage. I was ready for my dancers to be able to do it on stage, I was ready for people to be able to see it because you know, we'd been marketing, we'd, be, we'd been pushing it. Like I wanted people to see it, I was excited. And then on the other side, it was kind of like, okay. <laughs> Cause I feel like a part of, I feel like any artist is kind of like, this thing is never done. Like it's never ready, ready. And even though I felt like it was ready, there's always that thing in the back of your mind, like, but it could be better. <laughs> like okay maybe this is a sign that this could be even better maybe this is a sign that it really wasn't ready I don't know and so the majority of me was like this kind of sucks and I was really excited like my people were going to come in they're going to watch it I was excited to kind of I felt like it was my debut to like a professional choreography situation and I was just excited for that next step in my career because Mm -hmm. big deal and it was a lot of people who were going to be seeing this thing that I put like my entire heart in that I had everyone else helping me with that I had dancers like you know coming late at night putting in all this time all this effort everything in I, it needed to be seen and then there's just that little I would say like two percent that's like but maybe it could have been more solid and that's <laughs> the part that I was like okay just relax it's okay it'll come together but then again that was back in March and we thought all of this was going to be over quite quickly yeah. so you know now it's a little different now I'm like dang I really wish we had that opportunity but back then that's how I was feeling because we were at, you know looking at rescheduled dates and mm -hmm. like postponements and had another date in the calendar and <laughs> we just had no clue that you know that it would still be happening yeah, months and months later so as an artist, um, what have you been up to during these months? Well, maybe about three weeks ago, Balotnik started their season again. So we've been back in rehearsals dancing with our lovely mask on. <laughs> it is- Oh, right, dancing in masks, yes, yes. As someone who has asthma, I am not- Oh no. I will say that it is not ideal. Yeah. But I understand why it needs to happen so mm -hmm. we're pretty diligent about it but it's not fun it's not at all yeah hmm. it's happening though it is yeah. happening and did you go you went back to Maryland for a little bit right it I was home for about a month and a half just the difference in being home like in Maryland everything is still kind of closed down very low-key and then I came back here and Atlanta is very much open it's very much people are doing what they want and I was like oh this is very different I had no idea yeah. And, and I think for artists too, for us, you know, it's, it's all about how do we get back and get back yeah. safely. So I think it's, it's awesome that Ballet Ethnic, you know, has mm -hmm. a season for you guys and that you guys are, are working. Yeah, we're doing okay. another, I'm pretty sure it's being live streamed. Yeah. Sure. I mean, but also we're a smaller company, so it's a little easier yeah. for us yeah. to stay within the guidelines. Whereas I know larger companies, they just don't have that ability. Like they don't have it the hardest thing is really just getting back in shape because I was talking to some people and this that stretch of time it was like six seven months that's the longest I have gone without dancing in my entire life okay. I'm 23 years old that is the longest stretch of time I have ever gone not doing anything and like 
my kitchen is the only thing that's hardwood. So during that time, I was like, okay, I'll take class in my kitchen. I'll do this. I'll do that. But it's not the same as having space to kind of move and really exert yourself and really extend your lines. Yeah. So being back in the studio, very much shocking, very much so. I can't believe I look like this right now. So hopefully it gets itself back together soon. <laughs> it's going to come back quickly. <laughs> well, while I have you in our chat, I actually would love to talk with you about um, you as a dancer, because as you said, you are currently a dancer with Bell Ethnic, which is a ballet company. And um, what is it like being a professional Black female ballet dancer? It always feels to me like it carries a lot of weight. It always feels to me, like when I tell people what I do, they're like, oh, really? You don't look like a ballet dancer at all. Mm -hmm. And I am always like, I wish that you would change the way that you think about that. I really wish that you would. And I understand why people don't see it as something that is so broad and so inclusive, because in reality, it's not. It's really not that inclusive, but I've been lucky enough to dance with a company that is ethnic. It is made of people of color and we do have all different heights, all different body types. And so that has been a good experience. And I mean, that is what I was looking for in general when I went to set out um, on my auditions when I was trying to join a company because I went to a predominantly white institution and I felt like I learned a lot while I was there and I'm not saying anything negative about them but I felt like I was ready to kind of come back home I felt like I was ready to dance with people that look like me again because in high school I had that experience and then I went to college and it was like okay this is different I had no idea what I was getting myself into I was very much overwhelmed and then I had the worst luck and had a very racist professor my freshman year of college and I was like this is something and luckily he wasn't there for the rest of my college career but it was enough for me to be like okay I'm kind of done with that for right now I really kind of want to go with people who look like me people who kind of understand what I'm going through and also people who are who will value me for my talent yeah. Before anything else, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, as a former professional ballet dancer, I think it um, it's one of those experiences that explaining to people the world that we're in is so yeah. different. Yeah. Um, because similarly, you know, I, I grew up in Maryland as well, and mm -hmm. my school was predominantly Black, and I trained at you know, places like Dance Theater of Harlem for the summer, which I know you did too. And to then be in environments where you're the only one is yeah. just like, it's crazy. It's like crazy. I remember <laughs> the first audition I went to, it was for like the rock school or something, but I was young. And the first, well, my very first audition was for GTA. So that was kind of what I was expecting. And then maybe like two summers after that, I went to audition for the rock school because our teacher was like, ladies, I really think you should do this. You know how teachers get it. And we're like, yes, okay. <laughs> and we went and me and my friends were the only black girls in there. And it was, I couldn't have been like older than 10. And I remember feeling like, am I even supposed to be here right now? Like, are they sure I'm supposed to be in this room? It didn't feel like we were welcome. And it wasn't that they were doing anything outrightly disrespectful. It wasn't that they were intentionally trying to like antagonist or anything. It's just the feeling of being in a space where no one looks like you. And it's like, maybe I'm not supposed to be here right now. Mm -hmm. I know. And it, and it's the, the sad part about it is that, you know, I'm <laughs> older than you. I'm in another generation and that, you know, 15 years later, it's yeah. the same. So, I mean, I know I, I'm constantly hopeful that times change as new leadership comes in and, um, and you know, your, your generation of pro professional dancers are doing and doing additional work that the next generation won't have to necessarily um, see kind of this similar thing. But I love what you said about, um, you know, going back home, and I know Bell Ethnic does a lot of work in Atlanta to show that, you know, Black ballet dancers exist. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and, and that you're, you guys are very talented dancers. And I'm thrilled that um, Bell Ethnic brought you to Atlanta, because then we can help foster the next generation of um, 
choreographers and you're one of them. So <laughs> I am excited because we're going to show little excerpts of your rehearsal um, of the piece that you are working on. And um, our audiences will hopefully have a chance to see your work, maybe not this one, maybe an iter iteration of this one on stage in a few months. We're, we're doing some work to get Kayla and the other 2020 choreographers work on stage. But um, thank you so much for joining us today. It's such a pleasure to see your face again. It's been a long time. <laughs> and thank you for sharing your story with our audiences. So I am gonna turn it over to, what's your piece titled Conformity? Ooh, it's been a Oh, I can't, I can't, did it have, I can't remember. It did have a title, oh my gosh, I can't even remember. Well, you know, that's something that might evolve too in, in like, these new stages of the work. So yeah, we're gonna turn it over to Kayla's rehearsal footage. Thank you guys for joining us today. And thank you, Kayla, for being with us and sharing your work and your story. Thank you for having me.